Hey y'all, so good to see you here on Grassroots Gardening today. I am excited today. I don't know whether it's because the mulch truck's coming in a few hours or because I drank two Red Bulls this morning, but either way, I'm excited and we're gonna have fun. Our buddy Patrick with Turf Master is, uh, like I said, coming in probably about three to four hours. So I figured what we do real quick is right around the yard, let's get us some before footage of all the beds and the areas that we're gonna spread mulch. That way we can come back hopefully this afternoon and look at it all pretty and mulch. I am just, I can't wait. All right, let's jump out of the golf cart here. Had to dig up the solenoid yesterday. Still having some irrigation issues. Mark's supposed to be coming down here in a little bit and help me out. He's my, my irrigation guy and also runs Gringo. That's the company that makes all the mulch that we'll be putting down in the yard today. So y'all remember this little bed from the other day in the video and I'm wondering if we have enough time I'm wondering if we shouldn't go ahead and just mulch this whole area over here it's not planted yet I don't have irrigation but while the mulch truck is here these guys can put out mulch so quickly and so efficiently we might just do that if we have time then we've got this middle bed right here and what a beautiful morning it is man look at that I could just get me a hammock and just lay out here and chill out, but we ain't got time to do that just yet. Maybe after the mulch gets put down. So anyway, I got the large center bed right here in the middle of the yard. There goes the herring taking off flying over the pond. And I think what I'm gonna do too is let them come out on the grass as far as they want to, make us some new nice little lines and just kind of increase the size of this bed a little bit. And then we have this kind of long, irregular shaped bed right over here on the corner of the house i'd like for them if possible to get up there on that bank all up by our back porch we don't need any here unless they feel like just putting a new little coating this is where we fertilized and put mulch down ourselves the other day but this will be a good example if you watch that video of how long it took me it wasn't that long but still takes effort you have to go load the mulch up bring it down put it out with a pitchfork and these guys with this hose coming through today, man, they're just gonna make it so easy. Then as we come over here by the pool, I'd like for them to come in and just put a light coating, a little top dress, if you will, all up through here by that Maui Gold. We've got some Creek Myrtles, Laura Petalum down through here. But this just needs some fresh mulch just to kind of make it pop and look a little more vibrant. All right, now let's go hit the driveway. Dr driveway. <laughs> All right, now let's go hit the driveway, take a look at those beds, and then uh, if time allows, I'd like to go get the John Deere tractor and put the grapple on it, and let's get up all those limbs that we cut down the other day. And then hopefully we'll have enough mulch to put a little touch up here on Hydrangea Hill also. Okay, so we're now on the first part of the driveway, which is closest to the house. This one I kind of call Redbud Curve because, well, we've got like four or five different red buds planted in here. Um, a lot of different colocasias there as well. And uh, all this grass should die here really soon. I was able to have a little bit of time yesterday to put the backpack, backpack sprayer on and spray some of that kills all that we got at the nursery the other day. So all the grass should be dead. Get that mulch on top of it. Should be fantastic. And now I think since uh, time is of the essence right now, we're just gonna finish this up while we're rolling, we'll do us a little rolling before footage. This is that sandy hill that we have. I also came up in here and sprayed all of this yesterday. This will be the biggest uh, hit as far as the mulch is concerned. This is probably gonna be a 20 yard area right up through here, but it's gonna look so much better after we get her covered. We got down in this little area where our Duke's Garden Cephalotaxis is probably need to come in here and spread out that little pile of mulch. That's the one we've been digging on for quite some time. We need to spread it out a little bit. And now we're coming up on our shady bed. I did get a few things planted the other day. We've got those holly ferns put in the ground. All this area is going to look so much better too once we get, get that beautiful cherry brown mulch spread on it. And as we approach this end of the shady bed, this is where we put in our new plants the other day our anise, and uh, we planted our cast iron plant right there, our farfugium or tractor seat plants, and then our little, little fern bed right there. So there is the shady bed. 
And here is the first bed, uh, our farthest one from the house. First one if you're approaching the house. This is the one that Anderson and I came in and got all the crabgrass out of the other day and pulled up all the weeds. I did come down here and spray a little bit too. And this one's got a good bit of mulch in it. He and I uh, did this one by hand not too terribly long ago. But while the truck's here, it won't hurt just to come in and put us a nice little top coat on this whole area. And it's going to be crazy hot today, guys. So we just lathered up with our sun bum, protect us from skin cancer, and now we're good to go. Dang, why did I get so much? All right, let's see if we got time. Run up and get the John Deere, put the grapple on it, and come pick up some of these limbs before they get here. They're not in our way, but they just look kind of bad, and I want to go ahead and just uh, try to get them up and get them off the driveway. pickup is done now we're just waiting on turf master to get here and while doing so since it is so dang hot outside today coming to the side of the greenhouse let's just go ahead and water everything a little bit because uh watered this morning but it's been dried out already it is um it's really hot i feel bad for the guys they haven't even started work yet uh, but it's like 100 degrees i don't know what the heat index is but Anyway, we're gonna eat us an apple here, water the greenhouse, and they should be here any minute. So I just got off the phone with Patrick just now. They're here on the property. They're up at the mulch yard getting their truck loaded. We're gonna drive down to the edge of the road um, just so we can guide them back here to the house. He did say though, uh, they've been blowing so much mulch lately. As hot as it is today, the guys are already pretty exhausted so we're just going to do one truck load today he's going to park his equipment here overnight and then they'll be back in the morning to finish up so no big deal we'll get it done uh, and i can understand because it is some kind of hot out here and those boys have been working hard already plus he said they blew mulch until like eight o'clock last night so i know they're tired we'll work with them we'll get it done no big deal here they come now loaded down Hey, buddy. Good to see you, sir. Good to see you. How the hell are you? We're getting there, man. <laughs> are you tired yet? We were tired about seven last night. Oh, I'm sure, man. We, we got a little bit of rest. I know y'all been getting it, dude. It's been getting it going. Hey, that's about. good for business, man. What's up, fellas? How you doing? Hey, Timmy. Ryan, sir. Ryan, good to meet you. Hey, Dylan, good to meet you, man. Well, guys, here we are. We got Patrick with Turf Master. They just pulled up. As y'all know, we've been prepping all day for this. The guys are getting started in this bed over here that we're gonna go right around so we can show Patrick kind of our game plan. I know you've already seen it, but this guy hadn't seen it. But we're gonna get these boys started in this bed right here, take a look around and get to blowing some mulch. You want to go ride right around real quick? That'd be great. Are they good to go now? It's set up. Yeah, I told him about to head up there. Okay. We have to run 
run the air on these trucks kind of light when they're around a lot of tall foliage. Yeah. Like Otherwise, it'll pelt the leaves on them real bad. Say that again now, you gotta do what? So when we're in a bed like this, yeah. where there's a lot of like pastas and things with, with soft foliage. Right. We, we tune the truck way down. Uh, okay. So that the air doesn't beat, the, pl beat the plants Completely to death. beat the plants and flowers to death. I got you. That's one of the nice things about these trucks is you can blow as hard as you want and pump it out or right. you can slow it slow down. Slow it down, and, adjust it a little bit. Yeah. So the remote control he wears on his side is what he does that with. Oh, uh, okay. He can go up and down with it. So like when we get into this bed area here, you know, it's mostly woody ornamentals, so all the foliage is up off the ground. So right, so you can let it fly in this little area can, right here. We can let it rip in Okay, here. and so that's about, how many yards did you say on that truck? That's a 16-yard truck, but it's hooped up. So, yeah, so we're well, you only 18. had to come half yeah. mile down the road, so. Yeah. we didn't want to have to make any more trucks than we had to, so right. yeah, it's about 18 yards on the truck. Right all here. right, good deal. The guys are back there blowing, as y'all just saw. We're going to come show Patrick these other beds. And then, um, you know, whatever we get to today, we'll get to. And then whatever's left, we'll just get to it tomorrow when it's much cooler because, daggum, it has been hot yeah, been a good one today. today. All right, let's take a look at this one right here, Patrick. And this is going to be probably, this is the biggest mulch eater okay. right here. I'm thinking this is probably going to be about 20 yards because it starts back there, where, you know, where I, you can see I've already began mulching. Yeah, at the end of the path. Yes, sir. Yeah, and then okay. it just comes this whole... This whole swath down to, uh, I'd like to go down to where it tapers in the road right there beyond that, that 25 mile an hour sign. So come on come on behind the sign and just take it on in this fence. Yep, yep, and we'll come all the way down to the okay. to the road here too. It's a good thing you're putting cherry brown here. Yeah. It holds on these. Oh, does it? Yep. Because it's a little bit more fibrous? The, little, the more fibrous, the smaller particles, it tends to hold a lot better on hillsides. Okay. Um, than, the, than the bigger chunks. chunks. The bigger okay. chunks, I, in my opinion, have more surface area. So okay. it's more area for the water to hit, Makes, more force to push it. Push it on down the hill. Makes right. sense. Whereas with the cherry brown, it is pretty fine product, so the water just flows across top right of top it. Right top of it. And I also came up here and sprayed all these weeds yesterday too, Patrick. So hopefully once we get it now, how thick do you like to put your mulch down? Like on a brand new bed like this one here. So on new construction or new planting areas like this, we like to blow what we call a base, okay. which is three inches. Okay, um, good. That's th thick. Three inches is, is what most of the extension services everybody around here recommends. Um, that, that's going to give you a good start because ultimately you're looking to insulate the root zones of the plants right. and you're trying to prevent sunlight from hitting the soil area. Yep. So anything less than three inches, you know, a deer or a person walks through here, scratches yep. it a little bit. I saw bit. that just the other day on another bed where the deer walked through, he get yep. let that sunlight penetrate down and up pop the weeds. Yep. Anywhere sunlight's hidden dirt, you're gonna have weeds growing. Okay. But uh, we typically recommend a three inch base. And uh, the other thing behind that is that buys you a year. With okay. a three inch base, you're not gonna need to come back in here for a year really? to put anything okay. out. All right. and, um, you know, when we're blowing a good product like y'all produce, uh, you know, it lasts that long. And really, at that point, you're just coming in and adding color. Just which, a little. Which is like that, what these guys are doing on this bed back here. And so they'll just add, what, half inch? or Typically just, just half a, inch to an inch. To an inch. Somewhere right. in there. And then you'll be good with that for another, another, 12, another, 12 another year? Months. That's great, man. I like it. Yep. All right, let's go take a look at some of the others. All right, sounds good. All right, Patrick, so here is the next one. And this is uh, not going to take too terrible much and again we're just going to kind of follow the contour bring it all the way out to the road but this will be another yep we'll blow a base on this as well all right sounds good easy enough <laughs> tell you what, grass looking. that's what i was just about to say so patrick if y'all saw the video uh he's the one that blew was it the same truck same truck blue. same same truck we blew compost all out here on the yard and then i can't you know i bought a top dressing machine yep. to rent out down at grassroots and i came back and put about five tons here recently but man, I'm just telling you, that compost top dressing has done Makes the trick. Really different. Yeah, and no fertilizer. Yep. No, all organic. So Patrick, <clears throat> we've got these three beds out here. This is little bitty guy right here. Mm -hmm. We've got the uh, pretty sizable one. Now these all have had mulch in them, but as you can see, it's pretty sparse and uh, definitely gonna need to come in with. Yeah, so I think so on beds like this that we've got a little bit of mulch, um, but there's still some, a lot, good bit of dirt showing in a lot of areas. Yeah. 
We'll probably blow like a two inch layer here. Okay. Somewhere a meet in the middle is what we call it. Gotcha. We've got little nicknames for everything. <laughs> okay, so meet in the middle. We've got adding color, All meet right. in the middle, and blowing a base. I love it. All right. Well, we'll put a little meat in the middle on this one because, yeah, you can see, yeah. especially we we had so much rain this summer, man. Yeah, especially a week ago. Yeah. And the hurricane. And the hurricane come through. And then let's see, we've got one more bed. So probably, sorry, go ahead. Out here, we going? Nope, nothing down there. All right. Yep, nothing down there. That's just all aquatic marshland down there. We're gonna we're gonna let it ride. Okay. All right, and I guess we'll do another meet in the middle on on yep. this one too. Same. Now we don't have to go all the way down there to where that white sand is. That's kind of a play area. Yeah, we'll we'll just maybe you can kind of see the line over there. Follow the plant line. That's right. Yep. Stay Follow right behind the plants. Yes, sir. We'll try to uh, if you're having a little bit of a problem with with rainfall here on the edges of the beds. Yeah. Uh, what we'll usually do here is we might blow it a little thicker right around the edge. Edge, just, just give you a little, little dam right there, kind of sorta. A little more time with it. Okay. Um, so it doesn't erode as bad. All right, that sounds like a plan right there, buddy. All right. So, so Patrick, right over here, I was telling the guys this morning, I don't have irrigation in here. Mm -hmm. uh, I haven't planted it yet, but it looks so bad. I'd love to come in here and just go ahead while the truck's here and just go ahead and put our base down. What, what do you think? I think that's a great idea. And one of the biggest reasons why is not having irrigation in this bed. When you've got a good base layer of mulch here, remember the, the mulch blocking the sunlight not only stops weed growth because it stops that germination, mm -hmm. it also stops it from baking the soil. Yep, and, so and helps, taking all the moisture out. It's gonna help hold some moisture. So anything you decide to come back in here and plant, uh, naturally I'd use plants that are adaptable to this area okay but uh it'll help them out a lot okay well let's if time allows which sounds like since y'all gonna spend the night we got all the time and night. we got all the mulch so i, I say let's go ahead that. let's go ahead and knock it out that sounds good cool y'all it's so dang hot out here the gopro overheated i had to run back to the house to get another battery i was only gone for two minutes they've already finished up that first bed and now they're coming in here and patrick said they're gonna really let it eat on this bed here so He's gonna turn the air up a little bit on the fin truck and really put down that base layer pretty quickly in here. That looks great, man. Man, that is so cool. I love putting down mulch, but if I had that truck, that'd be just mulch everywhere. I don't know if we even have any grass. <laughs> Man, this is almost like cheating. It's just, they put it down so quick. It took me and Anderson hours the other day just to put out a couple of yards. And while Patrick and I were riding around and I had to go get the battery real quick, like 10 minutes, entire bed is done. And I had them leave our little uh, flower bed area that we cleaned out the other day. That's where we're gonna come in and plant a bunch of pansies and petunias. And I just heard the truck fire up. So let's go up here and see this thing at what I guess would be close to full throttle. Oh yeah, you can see it coming through that pipe now. They got it, got it turned all the way up. That looks good, man. That looks good. We're just trying to get the truck set up now. We just, so we just switched over to the last job we were on with a dark brown job. Right. So the lower trucks, anytime you change the material, you have to kind of reset the truck. Uh, okay. So that takes, makes sense. And it's just, it's just all air, right? All air. There's an auger in there, I think. I remember seeing. There is. So it's a big turbo on the front of this truck. There's a big John Deere diesel engine in the okay. front of that turbo. It pulls air down these pipes right here into the bottom of what we call the air rock. Okay. It's like the heart of the truck right here. Here's where the mulch is processed. Gotcha. So in the middle of the back of this truck is a, a big tube with legs on the paddle. And what it does is keep the mulch turned up so it doesn't pump up. Pump yeah. up. Well, there's a chain in the bottom of the floor that pulls the mulch into this big box here. Okay. 
And that's what that pulley is doing right there, pulling that chamber, actually pulling the mulch in. As it pulls the mulch in, it drops it into the airlock. It's like a big cheese grater. Okay. Uh, as it gets into the airlock, it drops in the veins to turn and drop it into the airstream. And blow it and shoot it on out. Yeah. That's how I was telling the guys, it's almost like cheating right there, man. It I mean, it would take me, I don't know how many hours to mulch this one bed right here. Y'all be done in a couple minutes. I can tell you this, so this truck and two guys can do what it would take about six guys to do. Oh yeah, for sure. Absolutely. If, we if, still remember today when the wheelbarrows were around. <laughs> Back in the good old days. That was, I don't know about good old days. But old it, days. Yeah, old days. <laughs> <laughs> that went so fast. The guys are gonna go back up and get one more load and start putting that one out. Don't know if we'll get all of it put out, but look at the results. And of course the guys are gonna come back and get their hose. They gotta finish up this one little shady bed, but man, that looks so much better. <laughs> the only bad thing is now, it makes my scrawny little plantings and trees in here uh, look not so great, so. But over time, as these grow in, this is gonna be just an absolutely beautiful bed and that mulch is just, uh, man, it's just a cherry on top. So Patrick, I love to use this cherry brown mulch. I just love that color. And you were saying that makes up what percentage of what y'all blow? So Ryan, it, it makes up 65% of what we're gonna blow this that year. That much? And, uh, we'll, we'll blow around 20,000 yards of mulch this 20, year. 20,000 yards? And cherry brown is the vast majority of it. Uh, it is my favorite color as well. And, and so what do you think, as far as like regional, how does that work? Have you noticed like certain areas of South, cause you're just pretty much in South Carolina, right? Yep, yeah, we blow pretty much just in South Carolina, um, along the borders of the states. Uh, we blur the lines a little, but uh, so the, the funny thing about it is, we've come up with this analogy that mulch is like barbecue sauce in South Carolina. <laughs> um, I saw a map on Facebook a while back that showed the, you know, the mustard-based sauce here, the ketchup-based sure. sauce here. Yep, I'm a mustard guy. I'm a ketchup guy. Okay, well, there and, you uh, go. So uh, we, were, uh, we were talking about this thing in our office a while back, and uh, it's, it's uncanny how we can almost tell by the area code that's calling our office. <laughs> <laughs> As what, what color, what color mulch. That's if, cool. If, if we get an 864 area code in the upstate, it's going to be a, a dark brown or a black mulch. Okay. In the Midlands, it's going to be more of a cherry brown. And on the coast, they love red. Red. And do you reckon that's because of, like, you know, whatever natural mulches they've used in the in the past, like whether it be pine bark nuggets or pine straw, it's got some regional effect? I think, I think it is. I think, you know, with, take the cherry brown, for instance, in the Midlands where we are, we have a lot of pine trees. Right. So you see a lot of pine straw naturally. Sure. And the cherry brown is more of a natural color here, whereas in the upstate, they have more of the pine bark nuggets, but they also have different grass types up there. They have the, the uh, fescue true. and I the bluegrass. I didn't think about that, yeah. Uh, and the fescue and the bluegrass is a little darker green right. than what we have around here. And that black and the green just contrast each other very well. Um, helps it pop. Helps it pop. And then uh, I swear, I think the red is just kind of a tropical look and that's why you see it on the coast. Could, could very well be. Well, I'll tell you what, that cherry brown that you guys are blowing in these beds right now, it just looks absolutely amazing and I'm excited for tomorrow when we can ride around and take a look at these beds and the end result and it's just phenomenal I man i can't i can't thank you enough for y'all coming down here well, and blowing these beds for us we really appreciate you letting us do it and uh, we're looking forward to some cooler temperatures man me too we're in so we're in <laughs> september now it's 100 degrees probably over 100 heat index oh, yeah. and it's hot we're just sitting down here in the shade right now the guys are back up there blowing so let's go check on them and see how it's progressing all right sounds great
Well, y'all, well, me and Patrick were away talking about different colors of mulch. We came back up to check on the guys, and unfortunately, mulching had come to an abrupt halt. And reason being, we had a little snafu. The tarp in the back of the truck uh, got a little mulch in it, and it made its way down to the auger, got wrapped up, and uh, literally clogged the work. So the guys are done for today. But that's all right. We'll be back at it first thing in the morning to finish these beds up. But they did make it about a quarter way through this bed up here on the sandy hillside and doesn't that look amazing i mean just the way they covered this it looks so natural and with that nice base of that cherry brown down through there this thing is going to look fantastic when it's all done fortunately it wasn't a catastrophic event so in the morning the guys can come back all they got to do is hook their hose back to the truck and we can start blowing again Morning y'all, day two of the Big Mulch Project. The guys got here early and started blowing, so let's go up here and see where they're at. Man, what a difference y'all. That's a good example right there. You see that hard line of just nothing versus how beautiful this mulch made this bed. Time for some mo? Time for another one. All right, that looks so good, man. And I'll tell you, that hill God. Lee, it already looks fantastic. What a difference, you guys. Oh my goodness, I was just telling Patrick, now we just need more plants. But I, I don't know, with the deer problem, man, we're just gonna have to learn together. Because so far, as you can tell, I mean, we had a lot more plants up on this hillside, but the deer had other ideas. Well, you just heard the truck slow down. That is one more truckload. That's number five. So we're at about 90 yards so far and uh, taking a little bit more than expected. I thought we'd get all the beds done with 50 yards, but so far we're at 90. That bed up there at the very top of the hill, as we expected, since it was just dirt, it really ate a lot of mulch. But the good thing is we've got such a nice base down now with that three inches. These are gonna be good to go for a long time. Well, we've got the red bud curve blown in. Don't that look good, y'all? Now, Patrick and the guys, he's gonna back his truck down into the front yard and drag the hose down there, and we're gonna get on those beds down there by the pond. Well, y'all had to come up here on the deck. That mulch truck is a little bit loud, but Patrick, and the guys went ahead and stretched out some extra hose you can see here so they can make it finish that bed and then make it all the way over to that long bed. Hopefully we're going to have time to do that area over there going down to the pond. But the day's getting kind of kind of late and we're going uh, well beyond budget. So we're just going to have to see how these next few beds go. 15, yards. So about okay. a truck. All right. I, I say, again, while the truck's here, I say let's go ahead and I think it go ahead and plants it. out and because of where it's at, I think yeah. right here make it look good. I agree. Because it's going to stick out like a sore thumb yeah. if we don't do it next to these beautiful beds now. Yeah. So let's, let's go ahead and do it to it. All right, so we'll finish that bed out and then jump back after we go get Well, I'm going to have to get a truck to finish that bed. So we may need a truck and a piece. Let's do it. Uh, to let's do it. There. We'll make that a priority, finish that, finish this, and then whatever we end up with on the truck, we'll start dusting and come around as far as we can go. Golly, look how much better that looks, man. guys I might have misjudged uh, my measurement by just a little bit so we're gonna be at 144 yards that Patrick is gonna put out the guys are finishing up that bed down by the pond right now unfortunately I've got to go get some parts to get a piece of machinery back up and running so instead of making a two-part video which I hate to do we're just gonna come back tomorrow take our time ride around and look at all these beds they look amazing I can't wait to show you well, we just got home from the nursery today, guys. We had a big load of plants come in, so I've been down there all day. Didn't get to even see my front yard this morning. So you guys are gonna see it with me for the very first time. But what I figured we would do is just ride on the golf cart and start at the very beginning of the driveway. So this is how you're coming towards the house. 
I mean, I've already showed you this bed, but we're just gonna look at them all one time again because I'm so happy with them. And it just looks absolutely amazing. Let's just jump on the golf cart and we'll go and just kind of cruise by the other beds since you guys have already seen those pretty much as the mulch was being applied. And because I'm super excited and trying not to run over plants, I'm super excited to see the front yard because I just, I think that one's gonna be the most dramatic due to having that pretty green grass out there. Most of the plants are already established, so I wanna get on around there and see it for myself. Now we're coming up on the shady bed. Oh man, it looks so dang good, you guys. Look at that, I love how they came all the way out to the edge of the driveway. Got that nice defined line, and plus we're gonna scrape our driveway soon too. So that'll really help even define that line a little bit more. This one coming up here so far has been the most uh, dramatic improvement. This is the Sandy Hill bed and they put a tremendous amount of mulch on this one. If you remember, we didn't have anything other than just dirt and grass and weeds and it looked so ugly. But man, they really put it down thick in this bed. This is gonna help so much to conserve all that moisture in the ground and we can come in here now and really get to planting. And Patrick had an idea to tie this bed and the Redbud Curve together so by doing a little strip of mulch right here along the driveway. I'm glad he did that. It really gave it a much more natural presentation. And this one down here looks really, really good too. Remember we had, actually no, we didn't have any mulch down here in this one either. So this is gonna be another three inch base and it looks really, really good. Oh, and I did get to see this this morning. So I guess they had a little bit more mulch than they thought and they did this whole bank for me. <laughs> that looks legit right there. I did have some mulch on it, but it was old and raggedy. That looks so much better. They were able to hit this little bed for me too with a beauty berry in it. And then they even had enough to come over here to this bed out here in the parking lot and just kind of top cap it. Now this is where I have not seen yet. But oh man, look, they even had enough to go up under these, uh, these big old Leyland Cypress. That looks great. And ha -ha, they had enough to come and do Hydrangea Hill for us. Look at there. Man, that's a big improvement. We did have mulch up there. Remember we had that big washout right here at one time. Got it patched up and covered up. Wow, that really makes those hydrangeas pop, man. That looks awesome. Nice, they even got up in there beside our pool bed. Looks like they got everything done. I'm gonna jump off this golf cart real quick and let's go look around. Oh my goodness, this over here. I'm really glad we went ahead and did this. Now we didn't, I'm seeing right now, we didn't have enough to do all the way down to the water's edge, but just this little or wide strip right here Looks so much better. Plus, we're going to have leaves and stuff starting to fall here really soon, so that'll cover that up. That looks great. And then our little bitty bed right here looks so much better. I am just, uh, man, I am just ecstatic. I've been wanting to do this forever. And Patrick and his team with Turfmaster, they've been so busy blowing in other areas. They finally got to us, and man, I am just beyond thankful they came and did this. This would have taken me months literally months to come in here and mulch all this by hand not to mention we would have tracked up the grass by driving tractors or you know the mule or whatever manner we had to get the mulch in here so this is the way to go wow what a difference man it is looks so that cherry brown looks so good with this uh, zoysia grass right here Oh man, I love this one. This needed help. This didn't have anything over here on this little side. If, if it did, it was just super minimal. But that looks really, really amazing. And it looks like they had just enough to come in here and just give us a light little dusting to freshen up our mulch all along the house. Wow. Man, I and beyond impressed. Now, blowing mulch isn't the cheapest option, but if you've got a lot to put down, 
I mean, it's the only way to go. You saw those guys with that truck and that hose and just a couple guys, they were able to put out 144 yards. So we went way over what my original estimate was, but hey, it's okay. We had the mulch here on the property. We had uh, the super professional guys with Turf Master here at the time. So we just went ahead and bit the bullet, spent the money, got it done. And it's a big, big check mark off my list. Now the fun part can begin. We can start selecting our plants to put in each one of these beds and just watch this thing continue to evolve. So if you like landscaping and gardening content, hope you like this video. Hit that like and subscribe down there for us and follow along as this thing just continues to transition and change into what I hope one day will become just a picturesque drive coming to the house. We appreciate you very much. The more you know, the more you grow. See you on the next video, y'all.